Hello everyone, it is me Vegeta T23 and welcome back to my new what if. Today we're talking about what if Vegeta was born with Frieza's potential. Before I start I'd like to mention that I created a discord server for you to join. The link is in the description of this video so if you'd like to join in and talk to me and the rest of my fans, it's there. I'd also like to mention that I created an Instagram so you can survey my very uninteresting life. I mainly post OSU stuff. Now back to the video. In the last part we discussed the stuff that happened after Frieza and his shenanigans. Vegeta managed to perfectly control his Super Saiyan Blue evolution and Goku got his Super Saiyan Blue with Kaioken down to perfection. So the two just had to cross the river of a technique we told them about which was Ultra Instinct. They got that chance when Champa stormed in demanding Earth through a tournament and they all agreed. So the Saiyans had an excuse to go to the time chamber. And there they have reached that level, although barely. So they just got to the tip of the iceberg and they set out to the tournament. At the tournament everything went fine. Goku defeated plenty of people, Hit got pwned, Trunks got a student of all people and so on. Vegeta was the last person to battle and he defeated Hit with hardly any effort using his newly acquired Ultra Instinct. Surprising gods and friends alike. With the recap out of the way, let's continue the what if. After the tournament, Whis congratulated Vegeta on achieving this legendary status and wanting Goku to follow. Goku then contemplates and empties his mind as well, activating his Ultra Instinct. Whis was ecstatic at the news of both Saiyans having the ability and looks forward on training them to master it fully, at the expense of Bulma's food budget for that month. Back at home, the Saiyans are calming down from the tournament and are commenting the events that happened in it. Goku and Vegeta bonded quite a bit, Saiyan to Saiyan and commented on how to improve their newfound technique. After thinking through it, they figured Whis is a master at that and they visit Beerus' world once again to train under Whis and get their technique ramped up. What they didn't know is, in the future, we see Trunks with several stab wounds and lying on the ground, barely clinging to life. Bulma and Mai take him to safety but not until an unrecognizable foe appears in the fog, with an extraordinarily pinkish aura. Bulma and Mai run for their lives, but it all goes into the dust when Mai is taken down by this new enemy, seemingly gone for good. Bulma took matters into her own hands and got Trunks to a safe place herself and healed him for quite some time. Meanwhile, in the present timeline, we can see Goku and Vegeta can use Ultra Instinct with confidence that they can use it however and whenever for that matter. They are attempting to reach the completed version of Ultra Instinct as to rule out any unnecessary attack patterns that might bring them down. Back to the future, Trunks is all better now, but Bulma advises him to go all out if needs be to get to the time machine and save their timeline. Trunks abides by her words and leaves sneaking all over the city and actually arriving at a base, where the time machine is all complete and ready to be launched. Trunks was discovered by the enemy, but he escaped unscathed. At the present time, future Trunks appears out of thin air in front of Capsule Corp, surprising the whole crew over there. Bulma comes out of the building and Trunks comes out of his machine, with plates on his body that were holding his wounds. Fast forward a bit, future Trunks is welcome to the family and present Trunks doesn't get actually confused despite Bill of Gang's best efforts to cause drama and shit. Bulma called in on Goku and Vegeta and told them to come home as future Trunks visited them again, talking about a Vegeta faker. Vegeta got mad and told Bulma to make someone power up. Future Trunks went right to it and transformed into a Super Saiyan Blue. Goku and Vegeta, Whis and Beerus got there and Beerus started fuming up about time manipulation and whatnot. But after getting introduced to the sausages, he calmed right down. Future Trunks then told everyone that even he couldn't stand a chance and he has more potential than his own father. Goku got curious all of a sudden and asked how in the fuck did he defeat the androids of his timeline in the first place. Trunks replied that he became aware of his ability not long after, seeing that he was born exponentially more powerful compared to Gohan for example, from Bulma's stories and so, he figured he can just train for a month or two for once and actually destroy the androids, which he did. He then carried on to Boo and the gang, leading up to this new Kapichita guy who started destroying shit. 
All of a sudden, the one in question appeared, getting pulled through time. The gang learns that he calls himself Vegeta Black and that he came here to exterminate the mortals and Beerus learns about the foe having a time ring, notifying Whis about it who questions it. Right then and there, Vegeta fled to Black, going into his ultra instinct and swearing on his life that he will kill any copycat, no matter how strong. Black then transformed into the weirdest form seen so far. It was a Super Saiyan Blue clone with pink, long hair, much like a Super Saiyan 3. Vegeta scoffed at the idea of a god level of Super Saiyan 3 and just went in for a punch, landing a punch so strong the shockwave surrounded the world and leaving Black on the ground. Vegeta descended down to look upon the enemy, scolding him to get up or die as a bitch. Black just replied how the pain will just get him stronger and powering up to his new height. Black got a boost from just one hit and continued the assault on Vegeta, however not even getting closer to the power output of Vegeta's, which only draws him back in battle, getting him to a new ceiling to an expense of stamina as he got tired really fast. Vegeta showed him who's boss in this world, powered up one single attack and sent Black back from where he came from, which he did in such fashion that the time tier closed behind Black as a convenience to the plot. From this point on, Black was furious, wanting that power for himself. In the present, Vegeta went back to the group and explained the power growth from within the Black, knowing he is the same Vegeta as himself and wanting to know more. Whis and Beerus shine light in the darkness, mentioning the time ring, who has and who is allowed to use it as well. So off they go to Universe 10 to get their answers. Future Trunks is fed a sensu bean and gaping holes on his body have completely healed and he was ready for battle once more. In Universe 10, Vegeta, Beerus and Whis come around to their world of the Kais and subtly sprinkle the event that happened a day prior. Vegeta senses that Zamasu has a similar energy to Black, noticing the key signature but not the key structure. Vegeta demands for a battle with Zamasu and he gets it. He confirms his suspicion that he is somehow involved and comes to a conclusion that Zamasu somehow transferred his own soul to his body but not saying anything, but actually just leaving. Back at home, Vegeta questions future trunks of the form Black used against him and it was revealed to be a Super Saiyan Blue 3, basically a Super Saiyan God version of Super Saiyan 3, but on a couple of steroids mentioning he can also access the power, going into Super Saiyan Blue 3 himself. Vegeta was briefly explained how to do it by Trunks and in a matter of minutes, Vegeta caught up to it and transformed into it. Goku managed to push to Super Saiyan Blue 2, but not further as his body gave out. Vegeta and Trunks went out to train before their next battle and Goku joined them as well. In the time chamber, they all explored newer heights of their power. Vegeta in particular, who sparred with both Goku and Trunks while they were fully powered up in their racial forms, to combat an Ultra Instinct user to excel further. This proved to work as Vegeta has ascended to a new level yet again. Goku was also given a shot, but although a big struggle, he succeeded. Trunks however, kept to his Super Saiyan Blue 3 and trained to attain the full potential of the form, as well as loads of strength. Once they got out of the chamber, they were greeted by Boma telling them a word or two about leaving without notice, but they simply ignored it and asked about a time machine, to which she replied that it's fueled up, improved, and ready for the trip. With that, the trio got into the time machine, said their goodbyes, and departed into the future. And with that, we're leaving things be for now. Thank you for watching. If you want to support my work, then click dislike, but if you liked the video, hit that like button. If you'd like me to cover your idea in the near future, comment down below. And as always, peace out.